everybody, welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. And uh, today I want to kind of talk a little bit about software. I had a couple of guys uh, ask me, you know, what do you use in your ham radio shack for software? So let's start uh, with the first one here called the Bob's Meter. Uh, downloaded this. This is free software. All this, everything you see on the screen is free. So uh, it's a great hobby because it's got all this free software that works great. So uh, everything I'm using is free. So the first one is called the Bob's Meter. It's really uh, used for my Flex Radio. And it uh, gives a old style analog looking uh, watt meter to the uh, Flex Radio. So that's what this first one is. The second one is called Ham Clock. Ham Clock. Again, you can Google the, the name of these programs, probably go right to them. Ham Clock. So let me kind of open that. And there it is. And uh, it's showing uh, local time and uh, UTC time. So I can keep this open on the desk when I'm making contacts. If I want to know the UTC time, I can just look right at this little ham clock. The next one uh, is a internet time software that I use before I start working any of the digital modes that require the computer time to be very accurate. The one I'm using is called NIST Time, N-I-S-T-I-M-E. And it's this software right here. And if we open it up, and you get a little box. And what you want to do is query the server now. And it's telling me uh, I'm two tenths of one second off so I'm gonna adjust the clock and it's doing that right now and it's already finished so now my clock is very accurately uh, set to uh, the true internet real time so some of this some of these software packages notably this JT65 requires that you're internet time and the computer time be perfectly accurate. So that's how I get it to be accurate. Again, uh, here's that uh, AirLink Express that uh, does RIDI soft, RIDI uh, decoding very, very well. And uh, I'd recommend that to anybody that wants to do RTTY, AirLink Express. And it's got a very nice interface. <clears throat> works really well. Here it is. There's those two uh, tuning bars. You get a waterfall and then below it you get a spectrum display. You also get what I call uh, sort of a super sweeper where it'll decode up to four signals that happen to be in within this pass band down here. So I recommend this software for uh, RIDI, R-T-T-Y. Again, it's called AirLink Express. The next one is a free program called Chirp, C-H-I-R-P. And all it's used for is to program radios. And here it is. And uh, notice that uh, I've used this particular free software to program up uh, that bow thing tri-power that I have. Uh, again, it'll uh, program a multitude of radios, so I encourage you to check out Chirp on the internet and download it and see if uh, your radio isn't included in its uh, long list of uh, uh, radios that work with Chirp. Chirp. Next one is uh, simply the software that I use for the ICOM 880H. And, uh, of course, it can't see the radio, so you're not going to get a whole lot. But uh, anyway, uh, this is uh, free software from ICOM. 
And uh, if you've got an 888, you need to have this software so you can program up your 888. Another neat one uh, is part of Ham Radio Deluxe, but it's actually a separate program called Digital Master. And it does a lot of the digital modes, including uh, it will decode uh, Morse code CW and uh, basically separated it out of Ham Radio Deluxe, set it up on its own icon, icon and uh, that way I can uh, use it. All right, so here is uh, Digital Master software running in the little capture window. And you can see, <laughs> I like to keep the mode uh, selection open so I can select it. And you can see the many, many different digital modes that uh, Digital Master can decode. You can see those on the screen here. Just about all of the ones that are used in Ham Radio Master. And it, again, here's Ham Radio Deluxe. And I'm using the free version of the software. I'm not using the uh, paid version, version 6. This is version 5X. And uh, Ham Radio Deluxe would be another package that you need to find on the internet and download, uh, if not only to test it and see if you like it or not. Uh, it's capable of running most every commercially uh, sold ham radio that uh, you could imagine that's out on the market. So, well worth having on your computer. Let's go to DB Tool. Now, what this is used for is I have a DB dongle which plugs into the USB port on this on any computer. And this software allows me to work uh, DSTAR uh, right off of a computer. And again, it's free. It's called DB Tool. Right next to it is uh, DRATS, which is a free software package for sending files of all types uh, across the DSTAR network. So if you have DSTAR, you need to download DRATS and see what it will do. And it, it does allow you to send uh, messages or files. Uh, using uh, two D-Star radios. No, you do not have to be connected to the internet. Sorry to tell you, the two radios could be on Simplex and they could send those files across Simplex without the internet. But it does work across the internet also. The other one is a neat program if you have an ant a beam type antenna that you want to aim. It's probably the best free uh, aiming software that I've found out there and it's called DX View. They kind of position these where you can see them. And all you need to do is type in your, uh, the call sign uh, in this box right here and click go and it will give you the short path and the long path uh, in degrees uh, to that uh, call sign. You can see that's in Mexico and it gives you a map, shows you the gray line and it also gives you the heading down here. So if you want the short path you're going to set the antenna to 192 degrees and if you want the long path you're going to set it to 12 degrees. So by using this, I can uh, determine uh, how to point my beam. Again, free software called DXView. Then I have Echolink, uh, which is another free software package. Uh, you got to have a license to get it, but it's free. And uh, any repeater that is Echolink enabled I can basically uh, listen to and talk through that repeater no matter where it's located anywhere in the world right off of this computer. Uh, FL 
ARQ is just another part of the FL Digi. This is their file transfer program. This is similar to this DRATS program over here, except for regular uh, radio use, you could transfer files from radio to radio using FLARQ. And when you download FL Digi, you get this software automatically. So they both come at the same time. And again, I normally use FL Digi, which is right here. Let's see if I can uh, reposition this a little bit. This is the main window of FL Digi. Let me kind of shorten it a little bit so you can see it all. And uh, this is normally the software that I use to work PSK31 and uh, several other digital modes. I prefer this over Ham Radio Deluxe. That's just my uh, choice in that. Uh, but FL Digi, and again, uh, it's free. Free DV, free DV, this software, uh, allows you to work digital modes using a regular radio. And there's several frequencies uh, that uh, ham radio operators kind of hang out on and work. Uh, free DV uh, using radios and they're actually transmitting a digital signal so it digitizes it. Signal is more like FM than uh, a regular analog ham radio signal so uh, kind of a little bit better audio if you got a good, uh, good proper propagation going. That's called Free DV. So that's another software package. This one is the uh, one that I originally got uh, directly from the Oshan website, Oshan, uh, from my Oshan uh, little handy talkie. And it, uh, it allows you to program an Ocean handy talkie up and this one is free right off the uh, manufacturer website so I've been using that all along to program uh, one of my handy talkies and then for the Kenwood uh, 281A I've been using the regular Kenwood software off of the Kenwood site <clears throat> and here it is and uh, that software is what I've been using to program up my Kenwood. And there you can see some of the frequencies that I've saved on the computer for the Kenwood 281A two meter uh, radio that I have out in the garage. The next one is very useful if you like to check into certain nets and it's called Net Logger. Now a lot of people might think this is a logging program and in a way it is. But what it's really used for is that during certain nets, uh, <clears throat> we can go up here and go find out what nets are online. And you can see it's showing me two nets are online right now. One of them is the Ole Miss 17 meter single sideband net. So I'm going to monitor that net. And I'm monitoring it, and it shows all the people that have. They've checked into the net in a list at the top. And then it's got like an instant message box where you can talk to the people that are on the net offline. So uh, similar to the little message box in Echo Link, except this is uh, uh, analog radio regular radio and a lot of nets use net logger uh, to log people in and then the people there get to having their own discussion on the instant message here a uh, little box where you can type in a message and then send it very useful if uh, for certain nets out there so I'd encourage you to jump out there and get net logger the next one is my favorite satellite 
tracker. And there's a bunch of them out on the internet. The one I like to use is called Arbitron. Arbitron. But right now you can see my location uh, that I've got programmed in in Dallas. And you can see the ISS in real time along with its track. But there are a multitude of satellites that this software tracks, including a lot of the ham radio satellites like FunCube and Cube One and Oscar 7 up here at the top. If you click one of them, it shows you the track of that satellite. So, you know, later on, uh, it's going to come up. Uh, Oscar 7 is going to come right over Dallas. It'll be uh, visible in Dallas. And uh, if it's still in operation, you could make a contact through Oscar 7. I like this program because it's real visible, uh, visual, and uh, pretty easy to operate. It's got a prediction window down here where you can predict what's going on, which I just did off of the satellites that I suggested. And then it gives me uh, data on that at the bottom of the screen. I you can just actually look at the screen and see where the satellites happen to be and uh, go from there. You can see what's going to come up and uh, then you can check that particular satellite and decide if you want to try to make contact. I also <laughs> downloaded the WSJTX1 uh, uh, digital decoding software, which is here. And the main reason I did that was for JT9 modes. JT9 modes. This will decode both JT65 uh, and JT9. So whenever I want to check out to see if there's any JT9 signals out there, I'll use this software, WSJTX. If you'll uh, Google WSJTX, uh, JT9, you'll probably go right to it. Now, I normally don't use a regular logger. I mean, I, I've already done a video on how I actually log contacts. But I do keep a log on the computer, and the software that I use for that is called XMLog. And here it is right here. And uh, <coughs> basically, I've got my entire log in here. And that's what I do periodically. I will import my ADI file into uh, this log program. I'll do it for you real quick. It's just all next. I find the log wherever it is. And it's right here. Here's one from yesterday that I downloaded off of uh, EQSL. So I'll double click that. And as you can see, it uh, imported eight entries uh, into XM log and told me that it had 617 duplicate entries, which it ignored. So I do keep a log on this particular uh, computer. Uh, and it's just really a backup. So I always have one on my machine uh, in case I want to look somebody up. But I really don't use it a whole lot. But it's free and it's called XM Log. Works pretty good. Anyway, that's the software that I normally use uh, in the ham radio hobby. Uh, give you the more important ones on here. I would say ham clock is, uh, I use it m almost every time I get on the air. Uh, DX view, I use almost every time. Uh, Airlink Express, I use a whole lot now. And FL Digi, I use a whole lot now. So uh, those are the most important ones in this big list. But uh, again, don't forget the D-Star stuff that if you have D-Star, you might want to take, and especially if you have a dongle, you're going to have to have DV tool. And you might want to look at D-Rats for transmitting files across D-Star. 
Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. I wish you clear skies. And remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. Clear skies, everybody. 73. See you on the next